Republicans. Your supposed savior is just a bully. I blew New Jersey on you. New Jersey's Chris Christie, the perfect man for the party that cheers the death penalty and boos gay soldiers. I'll talk live with a New Jersey teacher who had the guts to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Governor Tough Guy. Plus, how Republican voter ID laws are wrecking havoc on voters, including an 85-year-old man just fighting for the right to vote. It's important and it's outrageous. And the Obama health care law is headed for the Supreme Court. But will Clarence Thomas recuse himself given his private and troubling connections? Governor Lloyd Doggett on the coming fight for fairness on the court. Welcome to Politics Nation. I'm Al Sharpton. Tonight's lead, Republicans, meet your dream date. Hey, Gail, you know what? First off, it's none of your business. I don't ask you where you send your kids to school. Don't bother me about where I send mine. Can you guys please take the bat out on her for once? And you know what? And you know what? And you know what? Let me tell you, and let me tell you this. You know what? It's people who raise their voices and yell and scream like you that are dividing this country. You must be the thinnest skinned guy in America. Because you think that's a confrontational tone, then I, you know, you should really see me when I'm pissed. Yes, Republicans, that's your dream candidate. The man who says, quote, take the bat out on her. That's who you want representing this country. And you're not the only ones. Everyone from David Koch and Roger Ailes is reportedly asking him to get in. And while he says he's not running, he's certainly being a bit of a tease. Look. Like all of the compassionate conservative Republicans, he's making the GOP pilgrimage to the Reagan Presidential Library. Tonight, he'll give a speech there called Real American Exceptionalism. But let's take a look at his view of American exceptionalism. It means trying to cut $500 million from Medicaid last year. It means vetoing a tax increase for millionaires that would have generated $637 million for his state, all while cutting $819 million in state aid to education and laying off 3,000 teachers. This is the man that they're saying could come in and save the party. The guy from Texas didn't work, Michelle uh, Bachman, whoosh, evaporates. So bring in the tough guy from Jersey. He's compassionate. Look at him beat up on teachers. He cares about people. And just imagine him at the UN telling people how pissed off he is. And if you argue against this guy's policies, here's how he'll respond. First of all, I have not lambasted the public school system in the state of New Jersey. So if you'd, like to, if you'd like to conduct a respectful conversation, I'm happy to do it. If you don't, please go and sit down, and I'll answer the next question. What's your choice? Joining me now is New Jersey State Senator Richard Cody. He's the former Democratic governor of the state and New Jersey teacher. Uh, Marie, Cor uh, Marie Corfield, the woman who confronted Governor Christie at that town hall. Thank you both for being here. Pleasure. Let, me, let me start off with you, Marie. Uh, Governor Christie's being touted. He's being, uh, by any number of people, uh, called upon to run for president. You and he had a now famous or infamous, given <laughs> one's view of it, confrontation. Tell us what happened. Uh, well, I... He had a town hall meeting across the street from where I work, and um, he holds his town hall meetings during the day so that most working people can't attend. I just happened to be on my lunch hour. So I walked across the street, and I confronted him about the awful things he was saying about New Jersey teachers and public schools. Now, you're a teacher. Yes, I am. And, you, of course, you uh, uh, spend most of your life as a radical running around harassing governors and chasing people and all of that, right? <laughs> I, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I mean, you're, uh, I'm saying that facetiously to, right. so people understand. You're a very reasonable, middle class yeah. teacher that just like, wanted to know why he was saying these horrible things about people that have been the backbone of American education. Right. And exactly. his response. Um, he denied it. He denied saying anything bad about public school teachers. But, you know, I read the papers oh, so every day. so he just, in a very uh, reasonable and, and uh, uh, diplomatic tone, said, no, that is not the case. My dear Marie, hold my hand. Let me explain to you what I'm doing. Is, is that how he denied it? No, no. He was, you know, he had his usual aggressive tone. And, um, you know, I wasn't going to get a word in edgewise. He did have the microphone. Um, but it did, um, as, as a result of that com confrontation, um, I'm here now. I'm running for state assembly. You're running for state assembly. So he did inspire you to uh, try and show what elected officials ought to behave like. Yeah, and, you know, teachers, other teachers um, that I talked to afterwards, uh, when, when the Democratic Party approached me to run, they said, you have to do this. You have to do this. We need somebody in there to, you know, to be a voice for us because we're not you know we're not horrible people we're not using our students as drug mules um, we the majority of us the overwhelming majority of us are going to work every day doing a great job governor Cody uh, yes sir the uh, last of the uh, uh, candidates uh, it seems like uh, the Republican Party can't jumpstart their uh, alternative to President yeah. Obama. You know, Reverend, you said about the, their dream candidate right when you you and I were younger we, we had these dream girls right uh, they didn't turn around to be dreams, am I right sometimes, sir? <laughs> they, well, let, let's you put it this way. You never know when they you were, open the box. They were great until we woke up. <laughs> Dreaming well, I'm not gonna and go waking there, right? up is, is two different things. <laughs> but uh, let me say this. This is a man, you have been governor of the state yes. of New Jersey. Part of his national reputation is bullying people. I mean, let's face it. In your face, confrontational, no question about it. That's his style. He likes it. He thinks it plays well. Uh, so if, in fact, he runs, and we don't know that right now, right? right. But he's doing a great job of dangling this thing out right. and playing well, with the look press. Well, look, he's, he's gone all over. I'm going to show you in a minute the okay. tour he's on. But, but let oh, me yeah. say this. Given the economy, I mean, let's talk very seriously here, Marie and, and Governor Cody. The 9.1 unemployment, given the economy in terms of, uh, of we don't know where and how we're going to get the turnaround we need, uh, we're involved in t uh, two or three wars, do we need a bully as the president? I mean, is this guy ready for prime time? I bring to you, Governor Cody, my first witness, Chris, Co uh, Chris Christie. Let him tell you whether he's ready. You got to believe in your heart that you are ready to walk into the Oval Office and to lead the nation. And I don't feel like I'm ready. I don't feel ready in my heart to be president. I don't feel like I'm ready to be president. I simply do not have the desire to do it, um, nor do I think I'm ready. I mean, how many that times does he have to <laughs> say, Roger, <laughs> Hale, Mr. Colt, he's not ready. He says he's not ready. What are you doing to us? So if he does. There's going to be a whole lot of crow being eaten, Reverend. But look, look at the tour he's going on nationwide. It's not the first time. And he kind of plays with the press. He says, no, nah, I'm not really running, but does actions like this that would uh, say to you and I, okay, that he is in fact running. So it's time to fish or cut bait. You're running or you're not running and stop the con game. Well, le uh, let me show you this, Marie. He's game. going. Now, mind you, uh, the state of New Jersey, has been in uh, a serious uh, crisis since Hurricane Irene. Yes. They're arguing about FEMA funds, and they're arguing about how to deal with the damage done in your state. But look at where the governor is. He's uh, doing fundraisers in Missouri, fundraisers in California. He's uh, not only doing the California the Reagan Library, he's going from there uh, to do a fundraiser for uh, Meg Whitman. Then from there, he's going to Louisiana to Baton Rouge for Governor Jindal. I mean, for a guy that's not ready, he's doing a whole lot of national touring. And for a guy whose state needs those FEMA monies, he seems to be way out west somewhere. Yes, he does. But well, the, other, the thing is, Reverend, that in some of these fundraisers, he's running, uh, raising money for other people. And the other fundraisers, he's raising money for his party in New Jersey to defeat people like Miriam and myself. Right. So it's 
twofold purpose that he's doing. So here. he's raising money uh, in some cases for other Republicans, other Republicans, who, if he ran, would of course be supportive. Be supportive, and he's raising money to make sure that people like you in his home state Don't can't like deal it. with right. uh, uh, giving a voice for teachers and for some of the things that I said, the cuts that uh, uh, that we made. showed that he's right. made. Right. And this is the uh, last of the uh, uh, guys that they want to, or ladies, they want to roll out as the new promise of the Republican Party. Yeah, well, I mean, if Perry didn't make it, if Bachman didn't make it, uh, so maybe it's going to be him and Romney. And, and you know, running for president is a full-time job. How can you possibly be the governor of a state as large and significant as New Jersey and at the same time be running for president? So, I mean, I think he's being disingenuous at best, Reverend. Well, I think, you know, I don't agree with his policies. I don't agree with a lot of what he says. I, you know, I've met him. I think he's probably a decent guy. But I agree with one thing. He's not ready. He said that. I just showed it to you over and over again. <laughs> You're not ready. And I don't think we're ready for you. Governor Richard Cody and Marie uh, Caulfield, thanks both of you for joining me tonight. Ahead, President Obama is fired up and ready to go.